Hello and welcome to Stewardship Stories, a podcast about people who take care of land. You can learn more at stewardshipstories.com. This episode is an interview with Sarah Charlotte Powers, a friend of mine from the Yale School of Forestry. Before going back to school, she was the parks manager at Scenic Hudson, a regional land trust in New York. While there, she had to balance the ecological values of the property she took care of with the needs of the communities around them. It wasn't always easy, as you'll hear in this story. Central to the story is a crew of high school students who worked on maintaining scenic Hudson's parks. Sarah doesn't mention the crew until halfway through this story, but pictures of them, provided by Sarah, will be shown throughout. We did this interview in a classroom at the school, and in the background you can hear construction going on, as well as people in the hallway. Uh, My name is Sarah Charlotte Powers. What was your first experience in nature and what first got you on this track of doing this kind of thing? Sure. Um, Well, my first experience of any kind with nature was probably at the New York Botanical Gardens. When I was a kid, we lived in the South Bronx, but we had a car and it was, at that time, the gardens were free to the general public and we used to go there a lot as a family or as a neighborhood, I guess. We had a, especially when I was little and it was just my brother and I, my mom used to take a lot of our neighbors and stuff with us. And I have really positive memories of going there. It was the only place, we didn't have a yard where we lived and we didn't have really a neighborhood park. So it was the only place that was in our regular routine where we could just really run around and not be constrained. And I have a very clear memory of when they started making it more secure and putting up fences and trying to sort of turn it into a very cultivated place that it is today, of them putting these signs up that said, no walking on grass. And (laughs) my mom telling the security guard when he came to yell at us for having like 20 kids on the grass that none of us were walking and we were all hopping and jumping and skipping (laughs) and running (laughs) and cartwheeling. She was like, I don't see anybody walking here. (laughs) No walking. (laughs) Kids, no walking on the grass. And we were all like, okay, jump, 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 jump. And it was so much fun. Prior to coming to school, I was the parks manager for Scenic Hudson, which is a regional land trust in the Hudson Valley in New York. Our offices, or their offices now, are in Poughkeepsie, but the organization protects land from um, just north of New York City, starting in what in Yonkers, which is the southernmost part of Westchester County, all the way to the area north of Albany, so north of the Capital District. And my job there as the parks manager was to figure out how to maximize the ecological and social values of the properties that we owned, which when I started was about 5,000 acres. I would say the initial issue was that they had never had a parks manager and they hired me already as the owners of this huge amount of property with no plan for how to manage it and very little thought about how to interact with all of the communities that were affected by the conservation choices that were made by the organization. So I was 23 years old and it was my first full-time show up every day at 9 o'clock kind of a job and I was totally overwhelmed. I really didn't have a clue of where to start. But I would say for me some of the biggest, the things that I think caused me to think a lot and to grow a lot were a lot of questions about equity and who the organization was really accountable to. And this board of directors and the traditional constituents have tended to be sort of an outgrowth of this initial very wealthy riverfront property owner kind of group of people. And But there's millions of other people who live in the valley who never really had direct representation but whose opportunities to experience nature were affected. And so there was a lot of questions in the time that I was there about how to broaden the base of support and also how to become accountable to more people without losing the flexibility and autonomy to sort of do what we wanted. And that really shaped a lot of my interests and my thoughts about 
how to manage things. Mm, I was accused on more than one occasion of being too human-centric and not thinking enough about sort of pure ecological values of the properties. And I really feel that if anything, that really cemented my idea that ecological conservation without human buy-in is sort of a losing battle. Can you tell about a, like a specific property where that happened? Yeah, definitely. The property where that was the biggest issue was um, on the northern, northernmost end of the Hudson Highlands on the east side of the river. There's the city of Beacon, and then to the east of that is the town of Fishkill. And that area is contiguous. Scenic Hudson owns about 2,000 acres, and it's contiguous with several thousand acres of land that's owned by New York State Parks. And there, for many years, there was no, no consolidated ownership over that very large swath of property. And so there was tons of traditional uses that were really historic, and they included ATV riding and hunting, both with bow and arrow and with shotguns. There had been a ski slope on the mountain. There had been a, an incline railway which and a hotel and a casino at the top. And a lot of couples in Beacon had their first dates up there. And there was, there's this very active use of the landscape that was really traditional. And when parks purchased their part of the property, they sort of put it into their traditional framework of passive recreation. There they do allow a very limited hunting season. And when Scenic Hudson purchased the 2,000 acres that they own, they sort of extended their traditional, you know, leave no trace, just sort of use the property in a way that doesn't leave any impact philosophy and that was a total disaster and it, it created a lot of really strong negative feelings within the community and then sort of shortly after the pr property was purchased there was this huge wave of gentrification that happened in Beacon the, there was a large museum that was constructed and there was all this money that was poured into revitalizing the main street so by the time I got there there was a cultural war going on in that city and a lot of the war f focused around the environment and use of open space and it was really tense I mean there was a lot of blogs with extremely threatening messages about killing tree huggers and those people deserve to get run over on ATV. I mean, really, like, nasty stuff. And then a lot of counter-arguments that were like, you know, rednecks should just move out of this town. They're destroying our property values and our way of life. And it was bad and brutal. And um, I was really concerned, as you might imagine, in this new capacity. And one of the things that I did that actually related a lot to my experience with SCA as a high school trail crew leader was I contacted their urban program and we set up a high school a, a commuter program for kids from Beacon to serve as summer trail crews on our properties there. And we hired kids for a couple of summers and they did all of our stewardship activities and part of their summer plans were to host community events for the broader community on those properties and I would say that the project was a success though it ended up petering out because of funding which is still something that's kind of sad to me because I felt that it was really just the tip of an iceberg that really could have been explored so much more but it was one of the things that I was definitely proudest of in my time there. The underlying issues weren't resolved, but the focus was definitely shifted to what opportunities could be created within the framework of what was going to be allowed there. And I think that that was, while it didn't make everybody happy, it, it definitely took a lot of the stress out of the, the interactions between the conservation community and the public community, because it was sort of value added to everybody. Mm -hmm.